Thank you. In a moment of silence. Thanks, Gina. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's well. Given the hostess thinking as I was contemplating as I was doing a moment of silence, you know, this is like a small part of our democracy that we're actually, you know, it's an action as little bit that we do is it's still, you know, kind of, you know, kind of great that we can do this and, and work together and collaboratively, given what's going on in the world today. Um, okay, so let's start with um, Gina, Superintendent Picard, and Ned Draper. The floor is yours to continue the work that we started on Tuesday. Thank you. So again, just... Okay. <laughs> okay. So welcome back, everyone. Um, I just made sure, just to double check, Linda, everyone has a all school committee members are co-hosts, so you can I also let um, members of the public in as well, because if, if I'm speaking, if I miss anyone, and everyone is muted, Linda, so then we would, any member could ask them to unmute, and but no one will be able to unmute themselves unless a committee member unmutes them, so just to clarify. So as we went over last Tuesday, or this past Tuesday, I should say, we, go, we went over the review of the highlights, really discussing the impact that COVID has had on the budget, as well as um, items where you would see larger increases that we discussed, which was one was being uh, transportation. And then Ned followed up with all of you today with some of the follow-up based on questions that were asked. So I'll actually start there because that's where we left off. So Ned, if you wanna just talk through um, where we left off on Tuesday. Okay, uh, I believe each of you has received the email that we sent out this afternoon uh, that has the Excel version of the eight page and the 40 page uh, budget. Uh, so that way if people need to do analysis or uh, comparative, uh, they can or sorting. Uh, we also included details uh, that came up during the meeting. Um, I plan after talking to uh, Sue relative to structure was, um, I believe you received replies back after each budget meeting uh, last year. So what we're planning to do this year is because we're gonna be all virtual uh, to do it in an email format and try to get it to you before the next meeting. Uh, so you have that information. Uh, if we can't answer information on the fly, we will do so. Uh, another part of our plan is also to include the treasurers from each town on those replies so they're getting the same information and they can use that in their projections. Um, are there any, any questions from the uh, email that was sent today? Okay, um, in that case, uh, then I would open it up if, if there's any other questions for other sections of the budget or if there's places you'd like to go for us to get more details, uh, we, can, uh, we can do that now if you like to. Uh, one, of the, one of the questions then, uh, I'll get us started. Uh, one of the questions uh, the committee member Luzon had asked uh, was what is the value of a 0.5%. Uh, um, and I have to pull my email up if Craig has that handy and uh, we can go off of that. I have it right here. Okay. It is $270,375.71. That's one half percent of the fund balance. Okay, um, yeah, to refresh uh, 
everybody's uh, memory on that. I believe uh, there was a committee member, a uh, town council member rather from Hopkinton that asked uh, how much that would relieve uh, tax requirements and that's, that's how much. So if we were to look at uh, the one page section of the budget, that's section two. Ned, excuse me for a sec. Uh, uh, Linda sure. McAllister would like the floor. Linda? Um, let's see. Looking for you. Okay. Um, you thank you, Chair. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, I was going to ask a question um, of Gina when you talked about you have already cut 400 and some thousand dollars. And I would just wanted to know maybe some of the things that were included in that, but I can wait for Ned to be finished with his, um, with that piece that he's talking on to uh, just hear some of that. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just point out where this uh, addition of 270 would, uh, be inserted on the one page and then I will uh, look up what we had for cuts uh, to the original requests. So if you go to the uh, section two, uh, if you look about the middle of the one page document, you'll see over to the far right shows that the reallocation of fund balance for FY22 recommended is 1,532,000. 568. That number would climb by 270,000, which would move us up to around uh, 1.8 million. Then that 270 would be distributed amongst each of the town's contribution uh, in the same percentages that are there. Uh, so that would reduce, uh, reduce the town requirements by that amount. So Ned? Yes. We're at two and a half percent, correct? Yeah, with uh, with the state aid factored in uh, two, or are you saying two and a, oh, two, I'm sorry, two and a half percent of, yes. Of fund balance. So if we correct. deducted two, 270,000 and change, we're deducting it from the 1.5, correct? You're adding it to. So the 1.5 would grow. That would reduce the amount of money we're asking from the taxpayers, but it would also reduce the amount of money oh, okay. we have in our fund balance. All right. So from a um, from an operating standpoint, that means we would have uh, less ability to. Um, you know, whether an unexpected change, you know, let's say something significant broke or, you know, some kind of operating requirement for ride came down, we'd, we'd be, um, we'd be a little more vulnerable. Hey, Ned, this is Gary Liguori. Um, maybe this, maybe this question, maybe I'm way off here, but that 275,000 or so, you know, the request was to give the people some relief so if we equate that to a dollar amount per person or per household or per taxpayer across the three districts, have a ballpark idea what that comes out to? Fortunately, I don't. I'm, I'm not aware of what the uh, census on each, on each community is. I'd have I'm to- I'm guessing it's a pretty small dollar amount. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair to say. I mean, I, I, maybe that's only one way to look at it, but that's, probably per household a pretty small amount and yet it hampers the school district's financial flexibility and that, I don't know if there was an opportunity in a public forum to just you know if we had a, an estimate of that number if the rationale is we're not going to reduce it down to two percent here's one reason why true right All right, I'm looking for the reductions page. So you're gonna have to just give me a sec. I didn't have that handy. Uh, 
Gary, that would give Richmond a reduction of a one hundred one thousand seven hundred forty two dollars. What's that? That's a hundred thousand for Richmond, roughly a hundred thousand for Hopkinton, and the remainder for Charlestown, right? Ballpark. Yeah, yeah, and then that's spread out by household. No, that's I don't know how that would work in each individual right. town. Right. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks, Craig. Gary, this is Linda Lyle. I just, I mean, and, and Ned, you could correct me if I'm incorrect on this, because um, we met with the towns. I think what happens is it, it actually impacts their operating budgets, depending on how much they have to contribute to the schools. Correct. So, right, Ned? Okay, so basically correct. the towns, some of the towns are saying that they, they wouldn't be able to afford to run the town on whatever they have budgeted because the majority of the funds that they have would be going to the, the school budget. So that's Correct. the thing. That's I, I mean, so that's it's not, it's not a tax break. It's actually going to the town's operating. It's less than the town has for operating. Am I saying that right, Ned? Yes. It, yeah. Yes. The, the, the fund balance would be used to reduce the current tax requirement. Right. Correct. But that's a good way of looking at it. it is, you know, how much it actually impacts individual households. It's, that would be an interesting. Yeah, that's something um, we can get back to you on as far as, as how it comes out relative to population. The other, the other piece of this that I'm not aware of, but th that we'd also have to take a look at is what kind of uh, commercial impact because it, it won't uh, be all residential. I know some of the communities have some, some commercial. Okay. Um, did you want me to uh, start with the uh, cuts that were made to the original original requests? Uh, yes, because uh, that was a question by um, Mrs. McAllister. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so one of uh, one of the significant cuts was uh, supplies for maintenance district wide. Uh, was something uh, was done at the superintendent level. Uh, the reason for that cut was we reviewed where we stand now with the COVID response. Um, also, what we think we're going to be able to accomplish with the federal monies. Uh, and we just determined that that was uh, realistic. The other is uh, purchase services. Um, one of the uh, purchase services for nursing we think we're gonna be able to reduce that. Uh, that is a $74,000 savings. Uh, we had a special ed tuition that was removed. Um, we determined that that student will, uh, will not be eligible. Uh, we have half a fellow position that's being reduced. Value on that is 40,000. Which, which fellow position, please? That's the uh, ELA, the distance learning fellow. Um, ELA fellow right now. So replacing the distance learning fellow is an ELA fellow. It should be a reduction. No, there was uh, some grant funding, I believe, oh. that, that went with that. Donna, do you have a, a, a question or comment? I was just going to ask, does that mean we do not have the, um, the uh, distance learning fellow? Or yeah. distance no, we will, we will have a distance learning fellow. This was, what's that? We'll have a fellow. We'll, we will have a fellow. 
um, a portion of it will be grant funded. So Thank that you. will not need to come out of the operating budget. Thank you. I'll have to, I'll have to get into it. Um, we have uh, a variety of athletic equipment uh, that we reduced because some of the sports that didn't happen this year, this is equipment we can purchase this year um, and we won't need to do it. Some examples include um, some volleyball uniforms, some lacrosse equipment, uh, some cheerleading equipment, uh, some volleyball equipment, some soccer equipment and some softball equipment. Uh, All together, those add up to 15,000. Uh, we had some food supplies. Uh, those were reduced by 14,000. And we had another uh, athletics reduction that was 10,000. We have an E-rate uh, internet access uh, item that we could reduce, that's 8,400. Uh, we have a reduction to retiree health care, that's 5,800. We're expecting uh, AP exam uh, revenue offset, that's 5,800. Uh, we, we determined we will not lead an e-learning support for uh, pre-K at Hope Valley. That's 5,500. We were able to re remove a star assessment. That's 5,400. We reduced the repairs to our district vehicles. That's 5,000. We determined that we didn't need a uh, some uh, electronic equipment, that's about 5,000. Another uh, reduction to athletic equipment, that was 3,800. We have another uh, reduction to the star assessment, that's 3,500. And that's one, two, three of those at 3,500. We have some catering reductions. Those look to be about another 3,500. We had a reduction to the cost of our Zoom license that was 5,500. Uh, it's still in our budget, but this was a reduction to the original request. We have some grade five books that were reduced. That's 3,400. Same in the CALA program, uh, same in the library program. That's, so that's 3,500 twice plus another 4,200. A uh, similar approach to athletics in the music area. Um, we reduced uh, some music and uh, equipment because those things won't be needed right now. That was a total of uh, 3,700. Uh, we were able to reduce some of our virtual classroom costs. That's 3,200. We've got some text reductions. That's another 3,200. Now I've got a variety of texts. Um, three, six, nine. Got another about $10,000 in text reductions. We've got reduction in travel and some professional development, that's 7,500. Got some reductions to technology, that's another 10,000. Uh, reduction to furniture, looks to be another 4,500.
We were able to reduce our referee expense and official expense. That's another 2,000. We have uh, Dreambox, Head Sprout, and some Reading AZ licenses. That's another 2,000. We have about 5,000 in supplies. And these are a variety of supplies, but they, they go through technology, building, uh, and a variety of errors. And those are, let's see, 36, 36, 35, 35, 55. We'll call it about 7,000 in supplies in those miscellaneous areas. Uh, postage reduced by uh, 1500. Furniture, another 3000 reduction. Uh, we've got some more supplies here, another 3000. More travel, another 3000 in travel reduction. I have a question. Okay. Do we have a, do we have a question? Thank you. Linda, was that detailed enough? Thank you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, folks. No, that that's that was and that was all done in, in collaboration with the with the school based administrative team, right, Gina? Yes. Mr. Day, you like you have a question or comment? I have a question, a comment. Uh it it appears that uh what they've done so far doesn't really have a significant impact on teaching and learning here. And, and I uh, think this is the way to go, but uh, you know, we uh, think we need to get down to uh, decide what else we're going to cut out of this budget and uh, have faith in the, in the uh, administration as, which I've always had to, uh, to follow our direction. Thank you, Mr. Day. Uh, Mr. Callahan. Thanks, Chair. Um, Ned, I have a, a few questions I just want to touch base on. Um, for the uh, row 5241, which is purchase services, was that uh, professional development in district elementary? It seems there's a $30,000 increase over previous. Yes. Uh, that there, there's going to be two significant increases there associated with the ELA change. Uh, it's going to be 30. Uh, there's, there should be another 6,000. I think it's over in the Cala area. Um, but there's 36,000 altogether in professional development that's associated with the new curriculum. And then in the uh, textbook category, uh, there'll be 151,000. Uh, for the district-wide textbooks, so those are those. Yeah. Are so, yeah. so I, I guess if, if you could explain, so historically, it doesn't doesn't look like that category really was larger than than you know eight, ten thousand, that kind of range. What drove it up to thirty, and then what's driving the hundred fifty-one thousand? Because that stands out pretty well. Sure. Uh, Jane, uh, actually, uh, the, the assistant superintendent is going to be giving a detailed response uh, to that because that's all associated with the new curriculum. Uh, and that's the state, ride, uh, state required curriculum change to ELA. And math. And math. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that's just, that's a, uh, the move is, um, what it's going to take for us to comply with changes at the state level. Correct. All right. So, so approximately $170,000 to, to meet that compliance over what we had uh, kind of a historical position. Okay. Um, and then, and then um, I guess a, a question I have on the rental is this, so this will be row um, 5632. And this gets to the, rental of technology, the one-to-one -one for the high school. 
No, I'm, I'm all on board for that, but it just seems that we've got, you know, relative to fiscal year 19, a $130,000 increase and relative to 20, a $62,000 increase, but we don't, why high school specifically, all the other schools don't seem to have that significant of an impact or change. Uh, this is Gina, just a quick, um, just before we hop on to technology, Jean, did you want to, I know you're doing a, um, a very thoughtful presentation on Tuesday night, did, did you want to give any um, caveats for tonight so people understand uh, the, big, the big picture? Sure. Um, so currently we really don't have any resources that we use for our English language arts program grades K to 12. Um, the teachers curate materials and we do have our curriculum. Um, but now the state has mandated that we adopt um, a highly high quality curriculum. Um, and it's actually it's state legislation. So that's supposed to be in English and math by the year 2023. And we formed a committee this uh, summer and we've done the research and we worked with Ride to um, research the different programs that are on the ride approved list and see what fits best for our charaho. And that's the recommendation we're gonna be presenting to you on Tuesday night. Um, and so it is costly. Um, there is about 20,000 that um, Ned just spoke about in terms of prior cuts that we were able to reduce in the current budget, things that we would typically purchase that we wouldn't purchase if we adopt the new program. Um, he mentioned STAR, he mentioned some books. So there's about 20,000 that we were able to reduce from the budget if we do adopt this new program in ELA. But we're, we're gonna speak to it more in depth on Tuesday um, and present okay. what it is we're um, proposing to adopt and we're really seeking school committee approval for that. Okay, but basically it breaks down to the $20,000 uh, increase for professional development and $150,000 in textbooks? The overall cost of, and this is um, two different programs, one will be for K to five and one is six to 12, but for every student K to 12, the overall cost will be about $187,000. But I've got more of a breakdown for you for next Tuesday. Okay, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll hold um, further questions on that category till Tuesday, if that's okay. Chair, with your permission, I'd, I'd like to ask a couple more. Or yes, absolutely. Should I wait? No, no. But it's going to move. It's going to move off this topic. If oh, that's okay. okay with you. Do we want Gina to uh, answer the, the computer question first, and then we can move on to the next question? Your next questions. Gina was going to answer your computer rental question. I actually was going to double um, get more information. Oh. Am I on? Okay. Okay. I actually am going to. Um, get the information from Sean because I wanted to double check. I do know that the leases have increased, but I just want to make sure that that's the right information before I share it. So I will, I will follow up. I was going to say, I can, I can speak directly to the, to my notes here. Oh, yeah. hold on. Actually, Ned just found it, so hold on. Okay. Uh, yes, Ryan. What we have is uh, because of the way the high school, uh, the high school class, um, classes are moving through and when the lease, each set of leases. So right now they're set up based on uh, when each graduating class goes through and when the new classes come in, we have to purchase the new ones. Uh, so we have the um, Apple MacBook Airs and the way it's coming through is we've got um, the number of units that are that are going to come along with each class, so that's the reason for the uh, the bump up in cost is it's because of replacement of the MacBook Airs. It, is is that offset in some way by revenue from sale of the equipment at the end of the year? Does that does that answer the question? Uh, it's kind of it's yeah, a it's a so life cycle it's a life cycle issue as to when they're being replaced. Right, I don't think you heard your yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I, 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 I so, so Ned, I, 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 I understand your. 
to go there. I understand your question or your answer. I guess my follow-up is, is there a revenue listed in this budget that offsets that equipment in any way? Because don't we sell the uh, equipment at the end of the year as well? Yeah, and that, and that would uh, <clears throat> that would depend on um, what they'll give us. Okay, so but is it is it captured in this uh, in in any way? It, it would not be on the expense. It would not be on the expense side. How? Yeah, I, I, that would be on the revenue side. It would be on the expense. But but there I, is a revenue um, portion that that offsets. Yeah. Excuse me, Linda. Yes. Can I add to that? Just only because I know because I wanted to buy a computer. Um, several of them. I was told a lot of the ones that they were going to sell, they had to use because of all of the kids going one to one. So I don't think you're going to see the sales of, of them as high as okay. they were in the past because they were using more of them to supplement the kids and getting everybody on one to one. Okay. So I hope that Thank answers you. a little bit, but I know because I wanted to buy some and I know that they ended up having to put some of them back in to use this year to supplement what we had. Thank you, Donna. Yeah, and, and uh, just, just to add to that, um, one of the advantages we do have in our technology department is they are certified uh, for repair, maintenance, and, and um, construction, if you will, of the systems. So they're able to uh, basically move a lot of the parts around and make, make uh, functioning equipment out of broken pieces, whereas other districts may have to send that stuff out. So um, okay. we're, able to, we're able to make the most of what we got. Okay. Just as a, um, oh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to- Sorry, add, go ahead. Ryan, um, as an aside, this will also be an area to, to your question about the revenue side uh, this will be an area, if there is additional federal funding, we will go after that opportunity for these kinds of costs because of the digital nature. Perfect. Okay. Um, great. So my next question then will be, uh, I, I think this, I think I know the answer just to confirm. So row 5674 uh, and 5698, it, did these these switch categories in the sense that one, it looks like we have a, you know, a, a reduction from fiscal year 19 on the uh, purchase services for alarms, but then we have a service agreements for alarms on a, another line. Is that, are those offsetting? It looks to me like it is. Um, I would have to dig in a little bit more, but those numbers are, are spot on. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Um, and then we, we touched on transportation last night, so I'm not going to ask further on that. I, I guess a question on tuition. So looking at row um, 5833, we see an increase over fiscal year 19 of $570,000 and over 20 of $220,000. Um, what, what's driving that specifically? Special education. Yeah, the, the um, did you say 5873? So it'd be 5833. 53. That's special, yeah. special education students. Yeah, uh, based on, I'm sure I'm not muted here. Based on the review we did with the special ed department and both the new students that came into the district as well as the services required for the existing students, that's the estimate they have for what we're going to need to do out of district next year. What, what constitutes is out of district for that, that line item? Like, I, I mean, is that linked into transportation? We're sending some of our students out of district for something specific? So that'll be tuition. Uh, so it could be, um, there, there are different, uh, different locations. So I don't see Butler here, but that would be an example of a place. Okay. Bradley School. Harmony Hill, Bradley. 
Yeah, any of the private special education schools, Ryan? They're very costly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, That's all IEP driven. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I understood um, how that that allocation went. Um, I, I assume something less. So uh, I think my we do get some of that back. That's the, the we do get uh, reimbursement for some of those costs. Um, special education costs we do get reimbursement. It's usually I don't know what is what the what is the percentage now. It's it's not that great. It used to be like eighty or something percent, but I don't know what it's running now. As far as I don't know. Yeah, I'd have to get back to you on that. Yeah. Uh, Ned. Yes. Since you're in that general area, fifty-eight thirty-five. I've asked for several years, and I've really still never got an answer on why are we paying tuition to CCRI when there's no tuition for CCRI. Fifty-eight forty. Yeah, fifty. Forty uh -huh. thirty six. So well, total the total yes, but why are we even paying any? So that comes in um, two flavors, I believe. There is the dual enrollment, which is a high school student attending. Then there's the, um, I believe the running start program. So uh, the dual enrollment, it's to your point, the equity I would say is in question too, because if uh, CCRI is not uh, a cost for a Rhode Island resident, once they're graduated from high school, you know, I think it would be a fair argument to say, well, why is it if they have not graduated? Uh, but that's, that's not in our control uh, because that's how the state set it up. Uh, but that's, that's why we have that budgeted there. I'm not questioning whether we should budget or not. I'm just questioning, can somebody at least officially tell us that uh, anybody grades 12 or, or lower, um, the district must pay regardless. I mean, I'm just curious why kid grade. <laughs> Craig, this is Gary, and my understanding of the Rhode Island Promise is that you have to be a high school graduate or have a GED and be a full-time enrolled student yeah. to qualify for the free tuition. I just find it bizarre that it seems like the, uh, the, the higher de Department of Higher Education is kind of offsetting that with charging districts to pay for dual enrollment for grades 12 or whatever to go to a uh, junior college. So I just... Just an observation. Mr. Callahan, did you have other questions? Or did you, did you? I, I did. Okay. Um, that's a, a really easy one. So I think I know the answer. I've just tried to confirm a couple things. So getting down into I, custodial supplies. So 6211 and uh, 6310, you know, uh, maintenance supplies. Is this just, I guess, it looks like it's been reduced because of the expectation is a little bit different for fiscal year 22 versus 20 or 19, um, specifically 20. But um, I mean, we don't know for certain if we're going to be in a different kind of state of affairs next year. I hope we are. Um, is, is the, budgeted item, how'd you derive it at that grade of a reduction if we're still going to be in a position where we have to do um, uh, robust cleaning at a high frequency and those types of things? Yeah, we, we do have, uh, let me, let me see if we can highlight that line. Yeah, we've got, um, at line 6211, looks like our overall is one, is that 133? 133. Yeah, I think, I think what's uh, throwing it off is the um, adjusted budget, Brian. Our adjusted budget is very high because of the initial investment <clears throat> based on what- Okay. We, yeah, um, 
based on what we've been finding so far this year, we stocked up each school. Uh, we just recently had a review of the inventory on hand. A great example is uh, uh, the face masks. We've got plenty of face masks because what ended up happening behavior wise is everybody brought their own. Uh, so that's a, <clears throat> that's a cost we are not going to have again. Um, and okay. cleaning materials, you know, some of that was upfront costs, like the actual fogging machines, those sorts of things, but I don't think we're going to have to invest in those again. Okay, so this this just takes out the one time purchases and what ended up being an overstock. Um, okay. And, yep. I, and I assume that's the same for 6310 on the maintenance supplies. Pull that up. Similar like one time purchases or something like that. So all, we are already prepared for, for next year. Correct. Correct. Okay. The, the way we, uh, you know, so everybody's aware, the way we configured ourselves this year is actually uh, when Gina and I started initially working on our COVID plans. We were principals and, and it wasn't clear, are we gonna do it district wide and handle it at the district level or are we gonna handle it at the school level? And we determined that we would do it at the district level initially, uh, same thing. We made a lot of those investments uh, through the maintenance department. And then, um, you know, once once all the schools were set up, we, we were done. Great, thank you. Thanks chair, I have no further questions. I'm good to go. Thanks, Ryan. Any that I don't see any other. Oh, uh, Mr. Day, I'm sorry. I just saw your hand. Yeah, it's getting back to uh, the program that uh, Jane was discussing. I understood her, the state is mandating this. So that expense is going to be there uh, whether we decide to do it or not uh, Tuesday night. Am I correct? Want me to respond? Yes, please, Jane. Um, I mean, not necessarily. The, the cost is determined also by the program we select and that we adopt. Um, so, I mean, it's, but, but if we, we, and we'll, there's a lot of information to share about how we went through the process, but I, you know, I do think we did a, we had a committee of administrators and the teachers, and I feel like we really went through a really rigorous process, and we certainly looked at cost of the different programs that we were reviewing, and considered that when we made our final recommendation. So I, I do believe that the program we're going to recommend to you is, um, you know, the the best bang for your buck, um, but also a high quality program. In terms of, um, you know, whether you're, you're forced to do it or not, that's, you know, that, that'll be up to you to decide um, if it's the program that you want us to move forward with. But yeah, the, the fact that we have to adopt a ELA and a math program by 2023 is a fact. And that will, no matter what we do, is gonna have an impact on the budget. There's no way around it. I'm not questioning that, and, and yeah. I'm not questioning the thing. I just want to get that out there that people right. ask me so many times, what is mandated? Right. You know, I tell them the only thing it's the only thing we have any control over is what day of the week we mow the lawn and what color we paint the walls. <laughs> about everything else in this budget is mandated by the state, or we have contractual obligations for staff and, and contracts with vendors. So, you know, this budget is, is something that I've struggled with for a number of years and there's some other members of this committee here that have, that have been, been on board for, for, for a number of years. And, and it's it just, I'm, I'm, I know I'm preaching probably to the, to the choir, but uh, you know, it's just very frustrating when, when people don't take the time to understand this budget and then they just con continually tell us uh, how we're stripping the towns of, of their ability to, uh, to uh, function. Well, you know, this budget is, is, is set for a year in advance. The town's, on, the town's budgets are, are six months or less. They, they know what they're gonna be spending for. And we're trying to set a budget going up that, that we're not even into it yet. So 
I just want to make this, trying to make this clear to some of the people that, are, that may be on here and hopefully they, they will get behind what, what we're trying to do here and, and, and either support the budget with knowledge or, or shoot it down with the knowledge. But right now it, it happens that so many people uh, just go out there and you know want to find ways to, uh, to cut the budget without understanding that we don't have a lot of flexibility as much as we'd like to believe. Uh, one of the one of the former members of the uh, administrative staff over there said that, you know, uh, the, the state of Rhode Island is the ultimate school committee, and they are. Right. They 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 control everything. Yeah. Adopting these programs is is absolutely mandated. It's Rhode Island law, uh, gen, you know, legislation, and the other piece is our teachers have been working so hard since last year. Not that they didn't always work hard, but um, you know, things changed quickly and um, they've been curating resources and pulling things together digitally. The big, one of the big benefits of both of these programs is that they have 100% digital resources. There's also hands-on resources, but um, to be able to really support our students with distance learning that we've needed to do going to go a long way to really help our teachers. So it, it's mandated by the law, but it's also timely that we um, consider this adoption. Thank you. Mr. Gay, all set? I have to be. <laughs> Mr. Bryant, you have your hand raised. Um, we may have to unmute you. Uh, my question has to do with the technology hardware that uh, Ryan was talking about earlier on line uh, 5632. Ned, you said those are um, uh, Mac Airbooks, laptops, and so on. Um, has anybody looked at going switching platforms over to the Microsoft? Microsoft is typically less expensive. Certainly, the Apples have some benefits, but for that cost, I wonder if there's a cheaper way of doing it. So going back to um, going back to my uh, comment earlier, it's it's my understanding that our technology department can can service both types of equipment. Um, I, I have to sit down with Sean to go through return on investment criteria. I can say anecdotally, it's been my experience that the apples tend to last longer. Um, yeah, they they tend to be more reliable. Um, particularly for uh, creative processes um, and, CTC and programming. writing, CTC programming, so on and so forth. Uh, the initial upfront cost on, on the other is um, obviously much better, but I'd have to sit down with Sean to, to really compare how he's finding equipment's getting used. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, a quarter million dollars is, a, is not a small, small pocket change. And if we can um, maintain the same level of education abilities with a Microsoft product over the Apple, uh, there could be substantial savings there. As long as somebody looks at it, I'm good with that. Yeah, we can look at it. Okay, thanks. Chair? Mr. Luzon, here be hand. I, yes, go ahead. You have well, the floor. First, two quick questions. One, the other night I could click on a blue hand and I'd have a blue hand up. I couldn't do that tonight. You're a co-host. You're uh, a co-host. Okay. That's okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to do the best I can to go through everybody and make sure you- Okay, so getting back to a little bit of history as far as uh, why we went in the direction we did with the computers. Uh, when this initially started, uh, Mr. Ritchie um, sat, got together with a huge uh, group of people, um, all stakeholders in the system, parents and, and students and teachers and administrators. And they originally came up with uh, uh, the MacBook Pro um, because of the concern, like uh, Ned just implied, is uh, concern of how long it would stand up. And I don't know. If you go to the three dots, you Okay, I'm just hearing something. And um, so with that being stated, then they, there was a shift towards uh, um, the Chromebooks, but 
I know that I know that uh, the, the apples have really stood up since we originally started with the computers. Yeah, the, the selection like if can do you mind if I add a little bit, please, please do. Um, so yes, the selection of the um, the MacBook Airs when we started one to one, which began at the high school, um, you know, was was studied extensively. And then when the middle school added and we added them into the one to one process, um, you know, we looked again and did another study and those were more appropriate for middle school students because the Chromebooks that were selected, there were more, it was um, easier to do less damage if that's the right, I don't think that's the best way to say it, but um, they were sturdier devices and they also were sufficient to meet the needs of um, the teachers and the students in terms of how they needed to learn. We could use the Google Classroom as the platform, whereas at the high school, they use Canvas. Um, and at the high school, the MacBook Airs just have a lot of, a lot more capacity, a lot different types of features that they really felt at the high school they needed for instruction. And it was already mentioned about career tech and you know, advanced placement and in a lot of different courses there that have different needs. But we were able to use Chromebooks at middle school and then we adopted those for elementary too. And yes, they are um, much cheaper, but the need at those levels is just a different need. We don't need to have the MacBook. So when we could, we did purchase Chromebooks because um, yes, they were, you know, a better price. Thank so, you, Jane. You read my mind. That's exactly what I was going to say. So let me, um, this is Donna, and I don't know how to, because I, I can't raise my hand, and I don't know if you can see me, but um, anyway, having lived through that uh, for, um, it was approximately a year, maybe it was two years before we even initiated the one-to-one -one series. I was part of the committees that um, studied the different types of, of computers to invest in at the beginning. And we did a very, very, very thorough search having vendors come in. And the decision was made, as Jane said, as Craig said, to go with the MacBooks, uh, to go with Apple after strong consideration and input from everyone. So. I, I, I would like to see Sean's face when you go over and ask him about switching to Microsoft. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Greg, did you have another comment? You said you had two comments, no? Did you have another comment, Craig? Who's on? No, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I don't, at this point, there is no other hands raised. Um, did we, Ned, did we want to address some of the things in the email or do you think that the email is adequate enough for the committee to be able to look at that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think most of the details were covered there. Um, I don't know, was, was there any, you know, additional points we can we can bring forward. I don't have any. I don't know if anyone else does. Anybody, committee members, anything I else? I could, uh, if we want to get a little, um, a little ahead of where we were, I can uh, see if I can pull up that email to uh, share with the group for homeschooling. Okay, thank you. Chair? Yes. Craig? So, so the, the other night, um, I don't know if this conversation was going to be held till next Tuesday, but Gina alluded to the fact that state transportation and categorical transportation funding, a decision we'd have to make. Uh, looks like we have another hour here. So is there any way we could being on that right now or yeah yeah no I, I you know it's a great it's a great question i think it's 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 sort of like do we continue i'll let ned explain it but do we continue sure. to pay statewide and and it's going up 26 percent, or do we take everything internally but then we lose the categorical aid but i'll let ned explain that to you so so can can i just get to from what i interpreted or, or un, always understood transportation categorical funding right so I've always been on the impression that 
that is basically was uh, an incentive from the state given to the regional school district because of the size of the area that, that we cover. When we lost the uh, regional bonus, they gave us, a, there was a little incentive for transportation funding. I didn't know that that correlated to the state transportation contract. I thought they were two separate entities. So are they, or do they kind of go hand in hand? I don't know. So that's, that was my concern. Good question. So it's, it's my understanding uh, that the categorical aid was, was as, as you mentioned, an incentive to, to uh, help us offset the cost for our regional transportation. Now that said, you know, I've, I've been, because I'm new, been sensitive to if that categorical aid can be adjusted because we take things in house as compared to the state doing the service because the state mandated the service, oh, that would have been probably 10 years ago or so. Yeah, give or take. Not sure, but I do remember they were going through that in the 09, 10 um, time period. So, so when that happened, um, it required the districts to give that service up and then have the state do it. That has since shifted. Uh, the direction we got from the state was that they were uh, they were going to consider uh, releasing that, and a lot of districts have. Um, related to that, and, and hopefully answering that question, I, I asked another regional district in the area uh, what their experience was, and they, they didn't have any negative feedback relative to the state process. So yeah, I do believe we could realize the savings. Now that said, I do have a proposal in um, I do have a proposal in from Ocean State to start that service. I have not started the conversation yet with the state, um, but if if the school yeah if the school committee is supportive of us doing that, uh, what I would recommend is that the superintendent and I uh, consult with the state, see if they're comfortable with us shifting it over to our vendor, um, and then we start uh, start that process. Based on the numbers we've received, uh, rather than see that 26% uh, increase, uh, we'd actually see a savings over our current budget, which could be, you know, that could be a significant savings towards next year's costs. Uh, one caveat to that, we're expecting a bid uh, from Ocean State as well as other vendors uh, next week. Uh, and we included in that bid uh, package uh, requesting that they take on what is all done by the state right now, uh, so so we could uh, we could have other uh, other proposals included with uh, what Ocean State has already given us. Thank you. And uh, just as an aside, the uh, tab five uh, line line ten has the uh, categorical uh, transportation aid. Okay. And then line 11 is the uh, private school offset, which um, which would help us with, uh, with those costs. Right now, the way the state does it is they give us a credit um, off of their services, which, which it shows up as revenue in our budget, but it's not revenue we actually get to collect the way it's done right now. Does that answer your question, Craig? Yep, I, I was good. Okay, thank you. Did, did, you have another, did you have another one? I believe you did, no? No. Oh, okay, sorry. So I guess I guess just to uh, follow that up, not that we can necessarily vote on it because it's, um, you know, I guess it's budget generally, uh, but I think if there's a consensus for us to go to uh, the state, we'll do that, and then, um, you know, try to try to incorporate taking those services in district 
uh, with the new bid. And if we can do it sooner than that with uh, Ocean State now, we can, we can work on trying to do that as well. Sounds like a plan. Ned, I don't have any hands raised at this point. So. Um, do you want me to see? I'm sorry. Oh, does Gina tell <laughs> Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Day. Here's my hand here. I can't I'm see. sorry. Go ahead. Uh, my concern is uh, we've met. This will be the second night. Uh, the superintendent will be going to the famous omnibus meeting, uh, and I'm just uh, a little confused as to uh, what she's going to be able to tell the town councils and the, and the number of people that usually show up at omnibus meeting as what we've accomplished in, in two meetings. Uh, and people with a familiar with the omnibus meeting know how uh, how the how we usually get uh, beat up on pretty bad by uh, by the councils and and uh, and the general public that do uh, do uh, participate. So that's I just trying to uh, put a, a positive spin on something, hopefully because. Uh, I just don't want uh, things to come out uh, in the newspaper looking like we've uh, sat around for two meetings and haven't done any more than uh, listen to uh, information and not made it have any uh, real input from the committee members. There's only been, I think three of us spoke, spoke, spoke tonight on anything, or four I should say. Yes, Linda, Ms. McAllister. Oh, do we need to unmute her? Let me see. Um, okay, Linda's you're, fine. You're good. <laughs> okay, um, for me, I looked at this um, budget pretty carefully and I think it is was a very well thought out um, piece of work. It seems to be, um, and when we went over tonight, the things that have already been cut, they're substantial. And um, we're going into the unknown. We really are. Um, we just don't know what to expect. We have to have in our budget um, amounts that we can sustain the system. And also we have to think about the children. They've, they've um, they haven't lost a year, but we just don't know what they're going to need. And I think this budget looks to that and looks to support all of the services for our kids and the resources that they're going to need. So I don't, I don't have negatives for this, for this budget. I just, um, I think it's a very well done job. And I think it was a thoughtful job all around for the whole district. So when I appreciate that and I thank you. Thank you. Uh, Donna, thank you, Linda. Donna Chambers. Mike, Linda, I did a very close, careful look of this budget line for line. And I did not see a whole lot. And, and again, it is the unknown and it's very difficult to predict what we're going into. I did not see a whole lot of areas for cut. I think we took a big hit last year in making cuts that were, in my opinion, pretty essential um, to the programs. And I would hate to do that again. I think the only thing, and, and Bill, last year, if I remember correctly, the omnibus meeting last year was not all negative, but um, we were, we're consistently asked to reduce the fund budget. And I think that that is something 
that I personally, especially in light of the fact that we don't know what we're getting into, um, would be very opposed to that. We did it last year and I would not wanna do it again this year. So I feel prepared for the omnibus meeting, no matter what comes out of it. Um, I think it'll be, I, I think the towns need to accept this. This is the reality. It's a closely, um, it's a conservative budget is what it is, in my opinion. The only thing that is really becoming more costly is as Jane pointed out, the, um, the mandates from the state, which is a big chunk of money that has to, uh, that we have to absorb and the, the cost of living raises, the, the uh, transportation increase, the contract increase. Anyway, I, am f I feel as if we're ready for the omnibus meeting. And just because we don't ask questions doesn't mean we're not on board with this budget or not reviewing it very carefully. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Um, Mr. Luzon and then um, Ms. And Gary, you're next. Okay, Mr. Luzon. Um, unmute. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. All right, I agree, 100% agree with Bill. Um, so, his premise, so my point is Gina, just be prepared, Th that's all. Um, I think that the dynamics of the town councils, the individual town councils has changed from previous years, but that doesn't mean that um, they're not gonna be bickering and, and sniping about the same stuff they always do. Um, we do have a town council member on right now, now we could ask, Deb's opinion on, on how she feels of what she's seen so far. Um, it, just recalling from Tuesday night, uh, I think the town council member from Hockington looked at this and, and if I remember right, her main concern was the fund balance. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she looked like she was understanding to the rest of it, uh, which I was kind of amazed with. Uh, but the point being said is that's, that was my take on, on her view. Um, so, uh, Deb, you've been on this uh, meeting for, for the last two meetings. Um, what's your view and uh, on and any advice you can give to uh, Gina? Mr. Luzon, may I um, um, have uh, Mr. Ligori speak first and then I'll have Debbie speak. Right, Mr. Ligori, you. you're next. Uh, Linda, thank you. I noticed that uh, Lauren Cachola raised her hand. Yes, so yes she did also too. a town council member. I'm not sure if you knew that one, Craig. So if her yep. response is in relation to Craig, I'm happy to defer to her for the moment. Okay, thank you. Um, Lauren, you're on, uh, your hand is raised. Can you mute and speak please? Unmute. There, there it goes. It, it wasn't allowing me to unmute. Um, yeah, I'm from the Richmond. Um, I'm just here to listen to the budget because um, I noticed last year that that was a big concern. It was a big concern for me, um, just mostly for the kids. So I'm on whatever is best for the kids and whatever best for the um, the teachers and um, the school system itself. So um, I just want to know I'm an advocate for schools so well thank you very much uh Deb Carney do you want to speak hi everybody hi Deb I'm just going to add I, I think you guys are doing a good job going through the budget and I agree with the fact that there's one big unknown with this upcoming year nobody knows exactly what's going to happen and whether or not you're going to have to go back to virtual full-time so I think you're doing a good job with the budget uh, last year, you didn't get too much pushback from Charlestown. So, you know, we're, we're the ones with the lowest enrollment. So we're impacted the least with all this. But uh, so far, I've, I've appreciated the discussion and the questions that were asked. So I thank you for that. Thank you, Deb. Um, Donna, you have the floor and then George. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, suggest in light of the omnibus meeting that um, Gina, you be prepared for addressing um, the newer and fewer that came up when, um, when Sharon first learned about it and it was all new to her. So you might wanna give, it's opening a can of worms, I understand that, 
but you might get want to give them a preview so that they can come to our school committee meetings and learn more details about it. Um, I think that, you know, because it's such a capital expense, it's going to uh, come up during the meeting. Anyway, just a heads up. Anyway. Uh, Linda, I I'm sorry. I, I deferred to Lauren. I didn't say that. I didn't oh, I'm sorry, Gary. Uh, please, okay. you can speak now and then, then George. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, yeah, so I want to go back to what Bill said, and, and I really appreciate him saying that we need to be more active and not many people spoke up. And I also appreciate Donna's final comments earlier that lack of comments does not mean lack of interest. Um, I, I think there's, um, you know, I've heard people speak up too tonight, Bill, but what I haven't heard are suggestions, resolutions, opportunities, ideas. So, uh, you know, I know I'm new on this committee, but I'm not new to this type of operation. And if there's a mandate that we need to make cuts, then let's work together and make that happen. If there are individuals in this group who think we should make cuts, then they ought to put those out there mm -hmm. and not just say, we're not doing anything. Um, so we need to take our individual responsibilities and then when necessary, we can collectively work together. So Bill, if you have ideas, I think, I suspect I can speak for many of us. We'd love to hear those. But, but I, look, I'm gonna be honest. If you don't have ideas and don't call other people out for not saying anything. Thank you. Um, thank you, Gary. Sorry, uh, George, and then uh, Mr. Day. Mr. Abbott, thank you for waiting. Yes, um, a quick question. Will the omnibus meeting be virtual? Yes. Okay, that's, that's all I wanna know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abbott. Mr. Day, you have the floor. Oh, he can't get, um, let me see. Uh, let's see, where is he? Okay. Um. I made my statements not to uh, upset anybody on a committee, but I w wanted to be sure, and uh, Greg alluded to it a little bit better than I did, that, you know, this is new territory for Gina. And, and I've been going to these omnibus meetings longer than anybody in this room combined. I know how, how vindictive and how, how rough town council members can be when they're speaking before their fellow citizens making themselves look good. So it's not that I have any ideas or any criticism. I just want Gina not to be blindsided and not to walk out of there uh, un, with a, not a good understanding of how rough and tumble omnibus meetings have been. And, and if everybody looks like they're comfortable with his budget, uh, I think we're gonna get beat over the head uh, again this year because the councils don't care. All you're gonna hear from them is whatever you spend on the school budget, we can't spend on a town budget. And this is where it's, where it's gonna be. And someone mentioned this a little earlier in, at, at night. So, you know, we're gonna to have to, I think, Gina is going to have to, uh, you know, convince, not convince, but convey to the, to the people because she does most, normally the superintendent does most of the uh, communicate and that uh, we are open to, to uh, keeping a budget that will satisfy the taxpayers and the students and, and, and the staff. And, you know, a lot of the staff do work and live in, uh, not they, obviously they work in Charahoe, but they also live in the Charahoe town. So they're taxpayers in this, in this, in this uh, situation too. So it's, it, I didn't mean it to be a, 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 a slap at any of my school committee members. I just meant that I think that it was gonna help Gina now to understand that, that we're comfortable with this, but I think we also got to have the realization that there's gonna be some, some uh, uh, some cuts and bruises before this budget is accepted. If if we're going to get it passed by the town, we've last year last year we had a threat by uh, by Hoptican specifically that they were going to go out and, and and defeat the budget 
if, unless we made cuts. I think there's a few of you people that were there last year that remember that. So there's going to be some things that we're going to have to do that we, we may not like to do just to get a budget passed. So that's, that was my, my uh, intent. And uh, I didn't mean to insult anybody on the committee. I just wanted Gina to have a, a, a good understanding from somebody who's been through I don't know if 20 or so of these, uh, I used to call them circuses because they've calmed down quite a bit than they used to be, but uh, they were they were pretty rough and tumble. And uh, George and I think uh, uh, Greg will uh, attest to that because <laughs> they've been there before we, they were there before we went to just reviewing the budget. It was a free for all on everything wrong with the school district before that. Thank so. you, Mr. Jay. Um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Picard, you have your hand up and then Mr. Luzon, you're next. Thank you, Chair. So um, I can absolutely appreciate it and I thank you for all your support. I'm, as you all know, no stranger to difficult conversations and happy to take them on. Um, I'm a, a strong advocate for our students and our teachers and I will continue to do that on behalf of the district. So I do feel we're ready for the omnibus. Um, but as a committee, we, we're making three large decisions. One is our ELA curriculum that Jane will speak to extensively on Tuesday night uh, for both uh, math and ELA and our teachers and our, um, our district staff have worked very hard to make sure that that was a robust conversation throughout last year and this year to really be mindful and to actually alleviate some of the curating that our teachers are doing and spending lots of time doing. So you're gonna make a huge decision Tuesday night on that. You're also gonna be having a large conversation on newer and fewer and Donna's right. It's absolutely something that we have to overview for our town councils. And I will actually reach out to them again to suggest that they attend a Tuesday meeting as well because we're gonna have a really robust conversation and make some big uh, decisions on how we're gonna move forward with those, not just our newer and fewer, but our capital improvement projects, which also have a huge impact. And as we move forward, the busing contract, right? We're gonna make decisions on that as well. So that's, those are our three largest changes and you're making those decisions Tuesday night. So I do think that as a, as a committee, what I've seen in my short time here is that you have all been strong advocates of the district and the students. And what I hope you see when Ned reviewed our reductions already is that we tried to stay very true to our teaching and learning because that's the business of, of our work. And, and we're really trying very hard to um, keep those guardrails up and safeguard that. So we will continue to do that. Um, I will continue to advocate. Uh, we, we, uh, I recognize that our taxpayers, everyone's getting hit hard this year. Nobody, nobody wants to see large increases anywhere, but I can tell you, and I do appreciate the conversation around the conservative budget. We do think this is fiscally responsible. We, we, we don't think there's lots of, of areas to roam. We also know there's conversations throughout our school improvement teams with our parents around classroom size. There's a couple of things we're waiting on in that as well, as uh, some of you have seen with the enrollment. Um, while it looks like Charlestown's classrooms are, are being reduced, we have several homeschooling this year where parents have told us. So we're in the process right now of ensuring or verifying who's gonna return. If that doesn't happen, we may have to do some cuts um, in some classrooms if we know uh, parents are not gonna select to come back. The unfortunate thing is we're doing that now in a time where the state's at an uptick. So um, I, while they could tell us right now they're not gonna come back, we could close that classroom and then be in a position to open it back up in the summer if that changes. And we know when people get vaccinated, that's where I think I appreciate the conversation around the unknown. We really are working very hard as a team to do the, the work of the taxpayer and the work of the district. Um, but I will be ready on Wednesday and I am no stranger to difficult conversations. And I hope our town council members know that I take this very seriously and I hope that they recognize that if and when we can make cuts, we absolutely do. Thank you, Gina. Um, Mr. Luzon and then Mr. Bryant. Yeah, so I just I just want to reiterate what, what Bill was saying. Um, Gary, I mean, I, I, I understand where Bill's coming from. Um, last year, we actually got chastised by some um, town council members from a specific town. I'm not gonna mention any names. Um, I mean, literally chastised because we weren't doing enough. But we've also seen for years where there's a track record of this is the way we get treated. 
at the omnibus meeting, for the most part, we bite our tongue and don't say much. Uh, we're there to just answer their questions. But you know, this is just an observation. We have two members here tonight, and I've never experienced some of the words that they've said. So early in, a, in the budget season, such as, I can accept what's here, knowing the unknowns, and I, I want what's best for the kids and the, and the, the staff. And, and the, I mean, we've, we've never heard that so early in the budget process. Uh, I thought that was fantastic, but that doesn't mean we might not be, um, you know, we might hear something different next Wednesday. So I just wanted to at least let you know this, there's some history here and just be aware of it. That's all. That's all. Other than that, thank you. Thanks, Ms. Susan. Mr. Bryant, you have the floor. Can you unmute? Okay. There you go. Thanks. There you go. Um, actually, I think George is ahead of me. Then I'll come back. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, George. George go ahead. You missed me. No, I'm ahead, sorry, Miss. I'm sorry, George. How could I miss you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm big enough. Right? <laughs> <laughs> a general thing. We should be considerate of, that the towns are oftentimes worried about not exceeding the 4% cap. I think we should all hold that in our conscience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's that's very true, George. That's a good point. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Uh, the you. reason why I got involved in all this was being from Hopkinton and the pricing of uh, the price of cost of taxes going up each year is something that's very, very challenging for somebody that's on uh, fixed income now. So, um, I got involved in this to verify that the money being spent in the chair host system was spent appropriately and there weren't better avenues to, uh, to, to find cost savings. That's why I brought up the discussion about uh, uh, Apple versus Microsoft computers. I did look this thing over very carefully. First of all, I, I'm very much against raising taxes at all. It, it, fixed income, it's, it's an issue. But I looked very carefully at this thing and aside from the, the computers and aside from some things I see in capital improvements, I also agree that this is a very solid and a very well put together budget. I don't see anything in here that from my standpoint um, as a resident and as a former business person uh, who's quite familiar with budgets, any place you're gonna save any significant amount of money to make it worthwhile uh, diving into it deeper. I do think there's some savings in the, in the capital expenditures. And as Gina alluded to earlier, um, the discussions concerning fewer and newer um, is gonna be a big deal. Um, and I think that's gonna play into it uh, as well. Saying that I don't want my taxes to go up, I wanna temper that with the thought that sometimes spending a dollar today saves you $5 tomorrow. <laughs> so if it is presented well, um, in the future meetings to the general public and to the town councils, I think that they will see that a slight uh, charge, upcharge today is gonna to save lots of money over the coming years. I think that's money well spent. That being said, I would like to discuss the capital budget before we end tonight. And I'm curious, I see Bob Marvell and Steve Moffat here um, from Hopkinton. Um, I'm curious of what their thoughts are and what they've seen and heard here tonight. That's it, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Bryant. That's very, thank you for your input. Um, do you, Ned, do you want to talk a little bit about the, um, the capital improvement page? Sure. Thanks. And then the two people that were called out by Mr. Bryant, if you want to speak, please let me know. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put that up on the screen while we uh, talk about it. It's, um, Thank you. Tab six, tab six in the budget book. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, you know, on, on the side, uh, the superintendent and I were just, just discussing how if we, uh, you know, to follow along with what you said, Ron, if, if we would um, go into this in a little more detail tonight, we might be able to address some of the conversation we'll be having on Tuesday towards, uh, towards a decision. 
Uh, so the, the budget you have before you here um, is based upon the review that RGB did and is part of the necessity for school construction uh, process we went through. Uh, what was determined was we, we know, we're going with the knowns. So the projects we have here are based upon what uh, RGB has, has determined from their field review. Uh, I have looked at, um, our facilities director, Jason Sullivan has looked at, and we've prioritized what we think we could take on in the first of a five-year plan. Now, some of these projects uh, will, will require your review, uh, definitely some discussion. I can go through some of those now. I'll start at the revenue uh, just because that's, uh, that's a significant dollar value there. Um, the lines above the 1,461 are already in the capital budget. They've been associated. Uh, I think there'll maybe be some discussion about Hope Valley uh, because there's uh, electrical and generator work specified there. Um, I would like some guidance from the school committee for sure there relative to the priority. Um, some of the thinking we have right now is because of distance learning, the um, intensity that generators had before has, has somewhat diminished for schools, particularly if they're not a shelter. All right. Um, the 1,461 represents what we think we'll have available from last year's money. Uh, right now that money's tied up for COVID purposes. Uh, we're hoping to get federal money uh, to offset the use we've had so far. And tying back to an earlier conversation, this is why the adjusted budget looks larger uh, in fiscal year 21. It's because we are spending that money. Uh, but we do expect that we're gonna get federal money to uh, be able to restore it. Uh, down below that, we have organized by each building the projects we're proposing. Uh, one of the projects I would definitely say we stick with because it's really been essential to taking care of things like HVAC failures, uh, domestic hot water failures, some other repairs are the uh, $30,000 lines you see at most schools uh, because those are for either deferred maintenance or emergency um, equipment replacement. And that's really been a um, terrific resource to have. Uh, the big numbers I would bring to your attention are Charlestown. Uh, Charlestown, we have the parking lot, which was broken into two pieces uh, so that we could, we could get the money together to pay for it. Uh, that would definitely be a newer and fewer conversation. Uh, so one of the things I, I guess I would supp suppose I would put on the floor now to talk a little about is uh, the town gave us feedback that that newer and fewer would be a really tough sell for that community. Um, you can see here from the list of projects that we do have a significant investment we'd be asking for next year. And uh, if we have you know, some idea of which way we're headed, that, that will give us some, uh, some help. So the Charlestown, I uh, guess I would say it this way, is the Charlestown paving uh, something the committee favors at this time from looking at it. Let's see. Okay. Mr. Luzon. Gary, I mean, not Gary, Ned. Um, I thought that's being mandated by, by um, Brown Department of Transportation. And how long can we postpone that? from what you're implying by asking us. Uh, so my understanding of a portion of it was, uh, I do know right now uh, it's the engineering is still being done and there's, a, there's an issue between um, Department of Health uh, trying to figure out what they're going to require because the well is close to yep. 
proposing that the drive goes. So right now we're, we're pending state guidance on what they'll accept for a design. Okay. Any other comments from Charlestown? Just, um, Donna. Just, yeah, just that this has been uh, under consideration for quite a while. Years, yes. And, and it's, um, it's really, um, I mean, if we put a Band-Aid on it and we're not going to have newer and fewer and make new construction, then we're going to be sorry in the end. I, I, I don't know. I don't have an opinion on it. I just know it needs to be addressed. Um, and the newer and fewer may or may not happen. So, yes, I do think we need to at least do something with it. I'd be anxious to see what the design, what what comes out of the study that you're going to present, Ned? When when are you going to have that study, um, Ned? We yep yeah, we expect um, we expect within the next couple of months the state agencies will will conclude their review. And yeah, we yeah. Print, we should have prints available. I mean, we really have to consider holding that money in the budget for this purpose because it's really necessary and we've been putting it off for a long time. That's my opinion. Ned, this is Linda Lyle. Could you talk a little bit about the 500,000 for the CTE program? Just a little bit about why it needs to be done. And that's a big, that's a big yeah. amount. It's a big commitment for sure. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, I spoke to the director, uh, some today, just to, to follow up, we had uh, we had some discussion on this during our pre-budget process as well. Uh, and just so everybody on the committee is aware, not only did the uh, conversation with the principals include uh, the line item budgets and the detail we got into tonight, but it also included the capital planning and to get a feel for what their educational priorities were and how that might impact the physical facilities. Uh, so this, this falls in that category. Um, I believe there is an agency that uh, that certifies the culinary programs that's going to be in during the spring to take a look. Um, we put this on our radar because based on the age of the equipment and some of the practices in the, in the um, program, you know, they, they may need this. Um, however, I think it's something, um, you know, because of the size of the investment might be something we can do in pieces. Um, and it'll also be influenced by what this accrediting agency tells us. Okay. So okay. It, it could be, it's definitely something we can look at um, deferring or resizing uh, depending on the feedback we get. Um. Ned and G or Gina, as far as that, I, I wouldn't want to uh, impact students' ability to get certified or um, is, is the current kitchen in, a, in, in such a you know, disrepair that they, you know, they, they're not able to do that? Or is this something that would just, it just needs to get updated at, at some point because it is an older facility or older kitchen? Do we know? So, so my understanding at this time, it's functional. Okay. Um, it is working. Um, my understanding is, is they're able to deliver their program. I'm not aware of, of significant failures or, or problems that are getting in the way of, of delivering the education. Okay. And would this be, um, I know you said too, for state aid, you, you have to have it included in your um, five-year plan your, your, uh, for, for, to be eligible. Um, if we kept part of it, would, would we still be eligible to maybe, you know, be um, to be able eligible to get some state aid for uh, any kind of work we do there? I wouldn't want to. Yeah, well, I believe. So, so I'll answer that in two pieces. Okay, thank you. For the culinary program specifically in that equipment, I imagine there'll be some additional conversation about that because that's not quite as straightforward as. Uh, facilities work. Okay. So I, th I think there will be some questions from Ride as to why we're investing that in money and why is it you know specific to a program. Um, so that's one piece of it. The, the other side of that is 
yes, uh, we would need to have a complete list approved and submitted through their housing aid process to get the 61% back. Right, okay. Thank you. I'm, um, I'm sorry I interrupted you, Nat. Did you wanna maybe go through some of the other high ticket items? Madam Chair. Oh yes, Mr. Day. I'm sorry, because when, when sometimes the when we have something up on the screen, it's hard for me to see everybody, but please, Mr. Day, go ahead. Uh, I'd like to comment on the Charleston uh, paving project. Uh, yes. I'm somewhat familiar with the uh, property over there. Uh, I think that uh, we could probably take another hard look at that. And other than what the state is concerned about the uh, the circus over there with the with the no curb stops and stuff like that in front of the uh, wing of the building, uh, we could probably do some uh, some band aid and, and a couple of bad real real deficient spots over there and, and, and get by with with uh, <clears throat> less. Uh, less paving over there if if it comes to the fact that we've got to cut some money to in this budget to uh keep the the towns uh, under the four percent cap so that's just just a, a, a thought that i've had i have a little familiarity with the with the paving over there thank you for your input mr day is there any other Yeah, I would say um, from the big ticket items, um, you know, obviously the fire alarms, uh, air handling units, those would be high priority items. Mm -hmm. um, not listed here, but something we're going to follow up with RGB is we have uh, some HVAC work at the Marine Tech uh, location that may, that may be something that adjusts into this, um, but you know, it's relatively minor. The, the program you have before you is pretty close to, uh, you know, the, the finished product. Um, I do know that the Richmond at the backside of the Richmond Elementary School, um, that's in pretty rough shape based on what I saw after we were wrapping up the roofing project. Um, but yeah, the rest, the rest of the projects are, are pretty, Pretty reasonable in scale. I would say it's the Charlestown paving and the CTC investment. Um, you know, you have over a million dollars in in those two uh, those two projects alone. So I, th I think those would be those would be the areas for uh, decision on Tuesday that we'd really like to uh, uh, get behind us. Give us some clarity. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Day. I have a question on the uh, Hope Valley uh, upgrade of fire alarm. Uh, is this uh, a concern that the fire district has uh, as far as the upgrade is? Or uh, I know over the years we spent uh, uh, significant amounts of money in all of the buildings to, uh, to continue to upgrade the uh, fire alarm systems. And that's, that's uh, just pretty, uh, pretty significant amount of money, again, for a building that we may need. May that one there should, could uh, very easily go into the uh, newer and fewer uh, category uh, because uh, that building would no longer be uh, uh, operational if we uh, if we went that way. Okay. Good thought. Thank you very much. That's that's a good point. That's something I can uh, take up with uh, Director Sullivan and RGB and and. Um, Incorporated that into our decisions on Tuesday. I think the fire department is is, is the overriding uh, authority on that. If they're, com if they're comfortable with it, uh, then uh, then then we should be comfortable with it, and not spend a uh, hundred thousand dollars for a fire alarm system that the fire department is comfortable with. Chair, Mr. Yes. Bryant has his hand up. Mr. Okay. Bryant has his hand up. Okay, Mr. Bryant, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. McCall Ms. McAllister. <laughs> Mr. Bryant, you have the floor. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I was letting Ned finish up anything he had 
on his big ticket items because the ones I was looking at, for the most part, are smaller ones. Um, each of the or a number of schools have uh, an addition of a new thermostick mixing valve station for the eye wash stations. Um, I, I can't comprehend five and seven thousand dollars for that kind of a thing. A, a new station is about two thousand two hundred dollars, and a mixing valve is under a hundred. Um, you're talking two weeks worth of, of labor to install it. It uh, seems like that's really far, far out of whack. Um, so that's on all of the schools that have that mixing valve. Uh, those numbers look like they're grossly inflated by uh, thousands of dollars, many thousands of dollars. Uh, especially when you look at the copper water distribution at Ashaway, you got $10,000 for that. Um, and then seven thousand dollars put an eye wash station in. Um, the numbers just don't don't match to me. I don't, it makes no sense. Uh, roofing repairs at Charlestown twenty thousand uh, dollars. I'm not sure how bad the roof is, but that sounds a little pricey as well um, for a repair on the roof. Um, if you're replacing it, that's one thing. Getting the big bucks, but repairs that's kind of kind of high. And then in the middle school, uh, replacing the gym. Um, I hadn't heard anything about a gym problem. I had taken a tour on that last summer. Um, why does a gym need replacement? You're talking about the uh, air handling unit? No, it says, oh, air handling unit gym. That's what it is. Okay. I thought it was replacing gym. Okay. Okay. All right. That's what that is. And then uh, where else do I see this here? There's something else I saw that made sense. If we uh, go with fewer and newer, we need to spend the money on. Go to here. Oh, I closed it. Get that bigger. Well, there's paving projects for the newer and fewer and Swing roof repairs. Uh, culinary. No, I, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. That was the voice. The fire alarm. If we're if we're going to leave that school to spend a hundred thousand dollars on a fire alarm to voice actuation, sign up pretty high. Yeah. What what I'll do. Um, from both uh, Bill's comments and yours comments, Ron, is I'll, I'll follow up with um, uh, Jason, uh, the director of uh, facilities and see if we can get feedback from the authority having jurisdiction, uh, likewise involve RGB in that. And um, also check on, on those eyewash stations and see what the uh, cost situation is there as well as uh, the roofing cost. Okay, the last I just found it was exploratory analysis for shrinkage cracks in the building foundation, $53,000. Um, I, I, that's that is a crazy amount of money for somebody to look at the cracks and tell you why it cracked and I'm gonna fix it. So that number also $53,000 for something that should be, let's get crazy and say five to $6,000, probably more realistic. That'll, that'll be another uh, RGB question. Yeah, okay. we'll do. That's all I got. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ms. Bryant. Does anyone else have any other questions on the um, this sheet that we're looking at right now, the capital, capital improvement plan? see any Mr. Draper. All right well I just uh, you know I just say to uh, the committee and the participants uh, thank you very much for the feedback. You know I think uh, what we just did tonight um, to the degree it helps that everybody understand the value of their time I think this will really help for Tuesday. Um, I will work on getting the answers uh, for the questions we had because uh, you know that'll give us uh, clarity on the direction. I'd also say uh, from a financial standpoint, the way this could shake out, and I'll use, um, I'll use one of the Charlestown paving projects as an example. So that's 385,000. Um, 
as a dollar value on the expense side. Uh, that in turn can affect up above um, the 1.4 million we have on the revenue side, which would come from the fund balance. Uh, so that is uh, something in your tool belt that we can use relative to uh, what we just talked about. So, you know, I'd say just in this conversation, we, we identified a couple of options to work towards uh, how we balance the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Draper. Superintendent Picard, do you have any other items or comments that you'd like to make? I just want to continue. Just want to continue to thank the committee for their support. Um, we are continuing to review the budget, check enrollment, and do all of the necessary work to ensure that we continue to cut when we can and provide you with the information necessary so you can make an informed decision. And um, other than that, we will see you on Tuesday for a very extensive meeting regarding very large items that need your um, review and approval. Thank you very much. Uh, committee members, anyone else have any comments, questions that they'd like to make? You can have the honor, Ryan. Well, Ryan, uh, Ryan had to leave us. Oh. So you're, oh. It's up to you, Craig. Thank oh, you. Chair, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, Linda McAllister. Motion was made by Mr. Luzon. Seconds by Ms. Ms. McAllister. All in favor? Uh, I have a comment first, Chair. Discussion. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Discussion first. Uh, yeah, I just want to apologize to the new uh, town council members. I don't recognize your names. So uh, my sincere apologies. Yeah, no, I, it's funny because I was going to ask before we adjourned whether because uh, Gary had suggested maybe someone wanted to make comments, but I guess they didn't. They, I didn't hear from them, Gary. So. Um, so I'm sorry. Uh, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> now, we, uh, now we have a discussion. <laughs> yes, sir. Who could you identify yourself, please? Uh, yes, this is Steve Moffat. Uh, oh, hi, Mr. Moffat. Uh, hi, um, thank you. Um, I am the Hopkinton uh, Town Council President. Um, I just want to say I was looking uh, to, to raise my hand earlier and I couldn't speak. Uh, so I just uh, clicked to uh, to undo the, uh, the video, which allowed me to, to obviously raise my hand. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I, I'm a very big supporter of, uh, of education. I'm also a uh, Charaho uh, Regional School di uh, a District pro um, product of the Charaho Regional School District, uh, graduating in 1994. And I know Mr. Day. Uh, Mr. Day was, uh, I've known him for many years. I haven't seen him recently, but, um, but I, I remember him very well. Um, but I also want to say that I'm uh, very proud of the Charaho School District. Um, and where it's come from the time that I've attended. Um, you know, it wasn't always looked upon as a, um, as a great place, you know, and, and where we are now, I can uh, hold my head, you know, high and, and say that I am a Char Hope graduate, you know, and that my kids will soon be. Um, my comments really reflect what Mr. Bryant said. Um, I feel very strong with his words. Um, you know, nobody wants their taxes to go up, but I mean, it's, it's kind of the cost of doing business to do right by our children. And um, I look forward to the, uh, to the omnibus meeting. Um, I am going to be going over a lot of things with our finance director, just to kind of, you know, just kind of clear up some areas. But um, I just wanted everybody to know that I'm, I am very grateful for your place and the work that you do. And, um, and I just look forward to seeing where it goes. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Yes, sir. Who is this person? Mr. Marvel. There, can you hear me now? Yes. Not yet. Go can ahead. you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, yes we can. Yes, okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I had some technical problems. So uh, my name is Bob Marvel and I'm also uh, one of the new town council members for Hopkinton. Um, and I just wanna reiterate what, what Steve Moffat said and, and Mr. Bryant. Um, you know, I, I also appreciate and understand the necessary um, process of, of getting through the budget and, and understanding what the costs are 
uh, of, of providing a strong uh, education system. And I think that uh, I've only been a town resident for five years uh, and, and neither of my kids uh, ever attended Cheryl School Systems, but uh, I am also proud that, you know, I live in an area where the, the school system is one of the strongest in the states, in the state. And, um, you know, it, it, it comes at a cost and you, and you have to pay that cost. Um, but at the same time, you know, Steve and I are in the position, uh, as Mr. Bryant said, that, you know, our, our, our taxpayers who we're accountable to, you know, don't want to keep paying higher taxes and, um, and, and they complain every, every year when, when the taxes go up and the taxes go up and, and we have to, we have to find the savings somewhere. But I, I, I do understand the process. I appreciate the process. I appreciate the hard work that, that you all are doing. Um, and I also look forward to, uh, to the omnibus meeting. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you both for speaking. So um, we're back to, um, <laughs> that was a great discussion, Mr. Luzon. So we had a motion to adjourn by Mr. Luzon, a second by Ms. McAllister. Um, any other discussion at this point? No. Thank you. All in favor of adjourning? All right. Good night, everyone. Okay, unanimous. It's unanimous, Donna. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. We'll see you all Tuesday. Be safe. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.